Hello, everyone. Hello, how y'all doing today? This is another great day. We have a great show lined up. I want to thank all our viewers for tuning in to our regularly scheduled every Tuesday at six o'clock, natural as elf, sit down, powwow about trying to understand science, you know, not following it. We're trying to understand it like in our last show that we had. We're breaking down science into regular information where you can understand it, not blindly following some type of, you know, uh, babble or some a bunch of Latin talk. We're going to dissect what science truly is and provide it for you where you can make the best decision on how to live that you may have more health, that you may regenerate you know, your body when it has, uh, you know, broken down. We want to thank the ATR media platform, all things relevant media. Uh, you can check us out on YouTube, come here on Facebook and follow us. Um, and you can know when all our shows are coming, uh, you know, live, you can be a part of the live shows instead of watching us later on, but still, Watch us later on, share with everybody, share, share with your family, share with your friends. We got a bunch of good health information that we can provide with you, provided that you listen and follow it. You know, um, we can only, we can give you the information, but it takes for you to live according to what we say, where you can reap the benefits of it, you know, um, a lot of people might tell you that you can't eat fruits, that you can't fast, that you can't drink nothing but water, that you can't go out there and get sunlight, that you can't, you know, uh, get fresh air and tell you all these things which you can't do, but tell you to take medicine, tell you to use herbs, tell you to use supplements, tell you to go get treatments, tell you all these unnatural things, you know, and we tend to listen to them. And a lot of people say, well, you know, fresh air is not going to help me. Eating fruits is not going to help me. Fasting is not going to do anything for me. Well, let's try it. Have you tried a week of eating nothing but fruit? Have you tried going out there exercising? You know, I've had people say exercise is not going to build my body. Come on, man. Everybody know exercise is going to build my body. So we're going to tell you the wholesome thing. Bare blocks. Our stuff don't come with any type of adulterated um, means or conditions. They're unadulterated. Um, there's no medicine, no herb, no supplements. We're going to give you the bare blocks on what it takes for you to get healthy. Matter of fact, we, our topic is a very beautiful one tonight where we're going to be talking about oxygen, a requirement for health. Now, you can come here every week. Tuesday at six o'clock, please share. You know, I'm Ferrante Frazier, your holistic coach, your natural orthopathic practitioner. And we are going to be teaching health every Tuesday. And we have a clinic here that we're going to be, uh, well, we've been helping people correct a lot of their health issues uh, without the medicine, like we said. I know you say, why do you always keep saying without the medicine or without the herbs or without the supplements? Because we're showing you. We're natural as elf. Right? So natural as elf is without the medicine. Natural as elf is without the herbs and supplements and all the other boogie woogie um, um, means and treatments. We don't indulge in those things. But um, our show for the night, our topic is a real beautiful one. <sighs> you know, if you can't breathe good, you can die, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you can die real rapidly, you know, without eating. You can go many days without eating and still, you know, be here to talk about it. You can go days without drinking and be here to talk about it. You can go, you can go days without sunlight. You can go days, you know, without uh, getting exercise. You know, those things you can go days without. But oxygen, breathing, is something that you do 
on a, a minute by minute basis. As a matter of fact, someone breathes 10 to 15 to 20 times within a minute. So oxygen is pretty much ideal and it's a requirement for health, you know, because if you don't do it, you will die. So, uh, and you will suffer disease and die. Now, some of us, we're suffocating ourselves slowly but surely. We're, we're putting ourselves in a state where we cannot breathe fresh air, even though it's all around us. It's, it's there for us to take, but our lungs cannot appropriate. It can't diffuse, it can't exchange oxygen for carbon because of the damage we've done to it. Now, we're going to explain a lot of that in here in just a minute, but we're just going to let you know oxygen is a requirement for health. You want to know how much is required for health? All right, I tell you what, right now, put your hand over your mouth and keep your hand over your nose. Put your hand over your mouth and your nose at the same time. And if you do that long enough, you're going to start blanking out, <laughs> but you're going to end up letting go. But imagine if somebody else came and put their hand around your mouth and around your nose. It'd be suffocation. And it don't take that long. They don't have to do it for long. And you will start suffering. And then you will eventually die. So oxygen is a requirement for health. We're going to show you in this broadcast where you're not getting ideal oxygen, where you're polluting your air. And anywhere where pollution is, oxygen can't be there. Or you won't get enough oxygen for your bodily function. And we're going to tell you how important that is in just a minute. Now, your respiratory system is a whole system, all right? Let's look at that, the respiratory system, all right? All right, a lot of us, you should get a paper and a pen too, you know, and we, we, we're teaching science here. But it's going to be in a way where you can understand, it, all right? So oxygen is, is a vital thing for life. We just told you about that, you know. Um, it's like the, 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 the respiratory system uh, Julia said, I need my air to be clear and clean. Yes, you definitely got to do it. But a lot of us are not, we, we don't realize that our air is toxic. A lot of times we're used to the toxins in the air that we can't identify that we are in unclean air. And our body is living in that handicap. It's living in that handicap of not getting fresh air or having other toxins that are competing with the oxygen. You know, we, we won't smell it because we're used to it. We didn't adapt it to it. But if somebody else coming in, it, it, it'll affect them tremendously. But our respiratory system transfers oxygen from air to blood so that our cardiovascular system can, you know, distribute it out to everybody. You know? So our, our respiratory system, our lungs and stuff, they bring in oxygen. And the cardiovascular system comes by and pick that oxygen up and it travels throughout the body and it's distributed to every cell, right? Now, it's a lot of different, um, um, you'll say, structures in your body that deals with um, getting this, uh, your breathing, you got muscles, you got a whole bunch of different organs that play a part, your diaphragm. All these different parts of your body is ideal and must be kept healthy. But oxygen is a requirement for, for, uh, for health. Now, the number one thing we got to do is first be able to get the oxygen. All right. Oxygen is very important. So we got to find out the best way to get it. And now you can't breathe oxygen through your eyes. You can't take in oxygen from the top of your head. You can't take in oxygen from up under your arm, down there in your feet, in your rectum, or in your sexual organ. Can't get it out of your navel. So the only places that we can extract this air is through our mouth and through our nasal. 
And our nasal is the number one thing. Uh, we use that more than anything when it's not clogged up with a whole bunch of mucus and, and you want to say boogers and, and things of that nature. So when we're not having this obstruction from mucus and boogers, we're usually breathing from our nose. Right? So take a deep breath from your nose right now and just take in some oxygen. And then let it out through your mouth. So you're gonna take in oxygen out of the air you extract an oxygen out of the air every time you breathe. Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. It's really important that you breathe more from your nose. Your nose is pretty much set up by the body to clean that air. Like you have hair, you got hair inside your nose. And I know a lot of us like to go in there and, and clip and different things like that and clean out their hair. But those are like filters. That's the first defense and cleansing of the air that you're breathing in. So you breathe in, they have to go past all these hairs, right? And those hairs trap toxins and that pollen and all that stuff. That's why you sneeze it back out. You know, you looking at it like oh, I got a science problem, but you know, you're really just sneezing out stuff that gets trapped in your nose. That's a that's a natural phenomena. That's a natural thing that need to happen when dirt and stuff get in your nose. You got to get it out of there by a chew, sneezing it out. How you doing, Miss Tia? Thank you for being a part of this show and tuning in. Please share with uh, everyone. That uh, that's on your friend list. Tell your family members about uh, about us, where we can teach those people how to be healthier using natural hygiene, the natural way. We get you off medicine, get you off supplements, and and get you out of those treatments that these doctors you tend to put us in. But let's get back to the show. Remember, how we was talking about the nose, all right? Now, this nose when you're breathing in. The hair is trapping stuff, right? It's trapping dust particles and all type of other uh, things. So it's best to breathe in through the nose. You can't breathe in through the mouth because there's no hairs in there. Imagine breathing in and a bunch of dirt, all of it is going straight into your lungs. There's no filter. There's no filter in there, right? So, and if you notice, most times we're breathing from our mouth. We're not breathing from our nose. So it's ideal for us to breathe in through the nose, then let it out through the mouth. No, you can do breathe out back out through the nose. Now I would suggest too, like when you're washing or anything like that, maybe get a rag and wash around in there. But most times you're your um your your orifices are self-cleansing. That's why you have a mucus drip and you have it where you sneeze that sneeze it out after the mucus mingled with all the dirt. Now let's look at oxygen in the lungs. Now when oxygen is in the lungs, you got a lot of stuff going on, right? Now oxygen enters your uh lungs by you breathing in and then it transfers, it, it travels down all these little tubes. I'm going to give you a little bit of science, but it, it travels down a lot of roads to get to the blood. All right? So it goes through a lot. It goes through the bronchial, then it goes uh, through little bronchial uh, tubes and start getting more narrow until it gets to the end of the line. It gets to the end of the road, end of the highway, which is the alveolar. All right? And when it get there, there, these some little sacs, right? These little sacs. And those little sacs, you got the oxygen ends there, and then it it diffuses over into the blood. Now, the time that it goes into the blood, 
is when the ox when the carbon buildup high. When the carbon buildup high, the oxygen is going to come over and the carbon is going to go back into the lungs. And then you breathe out. All right. So you're taking a breath. Most of us are breathing according to the buildup of carbon inside of us. If you see somebody breathing a lot, like in somebody who's exercising, all right? Notice when somebody is exercising, they're exchanging air quicker because they have a lot of carbon buildup from using energy, all right? And we're going to talk about that in a minute, how the carbon is split uh, from the sugar in your uh, cell because your cell have to use this sugar, right? It uses the sugar. But the way that it uses the sugar is when oxygen comes into the cell and that oxygen ignites or breaks apart that sugar bond. And then the carbon is taken off and water is left there. All right. So the carbon has to be thrown out of the body. The water hydrates us. So it's ideal for us to what? Make sure we're breathing a lot of oxygen. I'm just showing you how important it is first about how oxygen is very important for our health. And then we're going to start showing you some areas where we're not getting proper oxygen. Just showing you a little science first and then we're going to break it down. All right. So we're going to speed it up for even a little more. Oxygen becomes blood. You breathe it in through your lungs. Your lungs diffuse it into the blood and it becomes blood now. And this blood travels around to the cells. And the cells take in what they need. If they need oxygen, they take in some oxygen. And that oxygen ignites that sugar and you have energy. All right? So oxygen is really important. Now, when the oxygen, like I said, when it reaches the cell, it splits and the carbon is uh, left in the cell and the carbon now is thrown back into the blood. It's an exchange going on. You bring oxygen into the body. It travels to the cell. The cell uses the oxygen to break down sugar and carbon is left behind. The carbon is then dumped back into the blood. The carbon then becomes blood. But this is not clean blood. Oxygen is clean blood. Carbon dioxide is toxic blood. So this toxic blood now travels back to the lungs to be discarded out of the body. This is a simple mechanism that the body does continuously. As you breathe in, as you breathe out. This is a phenomenal system that the body has to uh, get oxygen to the cells. Now, this is what the respiratory system does. No other system can do the job of the respiratory system. But neither can the respiratory do the, si the job of other systems. It doesn't digest food like the digestive system. It doesn't uh, cr uh, clean, well, it does clean the blood like the cardiovascular system, but it don't pump it around. So every system, the nervous system, got its own uh, familiarity, its uh, functions, what it's supposed to do. So here it is, we have to look at the respiratory system being unique. All right, it's a unique system. So here it is, this system, let's break it down one more time. I want to make sure you understand what we're talking about here. All right, so you, you, you take in air. This air goes to the lungs. It, it's taken into the lungs. So it's really important that those lungs are healthy as well. Only healthy lungs can pull in oxygen. All right. Now, after it pull in, it turns the blood, the blood goes to the cell, the cells then gets rid of the carbon, turns it back into blood, and you breathe it out. All right, now, you should understand that by now. Now, I didn't say that about uh, like um, 
you know, about eight different times, all right? So you understand what oxygen is going to do. Now, let's see how we break that up, all right? How we mess that up, all right? Now, let's look at an individual. If we were to go into a bank vault, all right? If we were to go into a bank vault, right, and we got locked in that vault, I don't know if y'all ever saw. Um, um, I think that was Harlem Nights when the police officer uh, was put in, left into the vault, and they told him, he said, "I'm not going to be able to breathe in here." And he said, "Well, take love, bro." <laughs> you know, so he was locked in this tight box that couldn't get no more oxygen in. Every time he breathed in, he pulled from out of that box the oxygen that was in that box. And he put back out carbon. So every time he breathed in, he took what little bit of oxygen was left every time it diminishes the oxygen in that box. He suffocated and died. Now we're in these houses that are what? Like boxes. We got them, you know, like a vault, you know. We got these, they call energy efficient. That's the word that they use for these houses now with no cracks in the door. You know, you go to them old folks' house, you can still almost see outside through the cracks and all that type of stuff. So they got per perfect ventilation. And, you know, you go to them old folks' houses in the country, they have the doors and windows open. But us, oh, man, we're not about to waste our energy, you know, because we got the heater going, we got the air condition going, and we're not about to let out our cold air, and we're not about to let out our, 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 our hot air. So we make sure that we keep the doors shut tight. We got all this insulation that don't allow us to, uh, feel what the weather is outside. So that means that we're not getting fresh air and we're in these houses like vaults. So we're not getting fresh oxygen. It's pretty much about four to five people in the house at one time. That means that everybody is breathing in what little oxygen is in the house and everybody is breathing back out. This carbon waste. And not only is that, imagine what else is going on inside our house. Let's look at some ways that we're taking away our oxygen now. Now we have fires in there where we burn candles, where we burn incense, where we got the stove going on. Now, what does fire do? Fire takes away the oxygen. It consumes oxygen. As a matter of fact, where the oxygen ain't, eh, there won't be no fire. So here it is. We're taking up the oxygen in our house, in our homes because we don't have proper ventilation. We don't open up a window. We don't open up the door except for just to go out real quick and hair up and shut my door, boy. Letting out my cool air. Are you letting out my heat? So we're not getting the oxygen that we require. Now, some of us, we also not, that's just one thing. We, remember I just said we burn candles. And that, those candles is, burn, is putting out other waste products. And it's not just taking the oxygen. You're burning these candles. These candles are made with wax and a whole bunch of other unnatural ingredients. And as they burn, that scent goes into the air. And now you're breathing it in. Now, remember, your lungs is only designed to deal with oxygen and carbon. It wasn't designed to deal with anything else. It wasn't designed to deal with incense. It wasn't designed to deal with uh, candles. It wasn't designed to deal with Clorox. It wasn't designed to deal with the so-called Tommy Hill figure and, the, and the, um, all the other little colognes, the uh, cool water and all these other perfumes and, 
and you know, um, I, I'm saying red door. I bet you some of y'all been a red door. We don't know what that is. <laughs> some cologne back in the days, but that's what the Drakkar and all, all these different clones, you know, all all these different uh, fragrances that you know uh, that we're suffocating ourselves with. Instead of us breathing fresh air, we're breathing all the other stuff that's in our homes. We have Lysol. I remember back in the days, especially in some of the project homes, um, some of the women, you go in their houses, they would have Fabuloso burning on the stove in the pot. They would actually have a pot of Fabuloso. Now, this is a straight chemical. Now, And, and if you look, read on any of these um bottles all these cleaning supply stuff that we have in there it tells you to make sure that you ventilate when using these products so don't use these products in unventilated areas well your home is an unventilated area but we're using them in there now you got to look at it as you're breathing in these fumes on a constant basis. Now, not only at that, we got airways that's plugged in our sockets. We have Febreze that we're spraying in the air and other sprays that we're spraying in our houses with no ventilation. Now, this is causing us to now we won't we cough at the beginning it was kind of strong at the beginning but we learned how to adapt to all that air air uh wicks we learned how to adapt the clorox we learned how to adapt the lysol we learned how to adapt the you know the fabuloso but if somebody else come in your house who don't use that they'd be like oh god it, the house is heavy in here it's heavy you know so you are unaware, but remember what I just said, your lungs was only designed to deal with oxygen and carbon, all right? Now, when you have all these other things presented, then you're starving your body of oxygen. A lot of us don't understand why we're, what, tired all the time, feeling fatigued? You know, because we are not getting oxygen because there's no oxygen in our air or there's other pollutants that are in our air. And we're breathing them in on a constant basis. And so you remember what I told you, when you breathe in air, the lungs, you breathe it into your lungs, the blood comes by and picks it up and it carry it to the cell. The cell then uses that oxygen to bust the sugar. Now sugar is your energy source. You, uh, the, your mitochondria inside your cells use sugar to make ATP, your fuel for your body, All right? It makes fuel for your body. That's, that's the fuel your body need, the ATP but it had to be broken down with oxygen. It had to be ignited, it had to be broken apart. So if you're not getting oxygen, you're not utilizing the sugar that's in your body because there's nothing to ignite the sugar. And that means you're not getting fuel. So you're not going to have the Energizer Bunny thing going on because there's no oxygen that's going to break the sugar where it can be utilized. So we can look at where the fatigue coming from. Where all this fatigue coming from? Well, we don't have energy. Now this energy is needed for everything. You need energy to breathe. You need energy to see. You need energy to hear. You need energy to think. You need energy to have a, a healthy immune system. All this requires energy. So I'm just trying to show you how important oxygen is. And 
areas in our life, areas in our house, we have been neglecting or we have been polluting our air and making it hard for our body to extract oxygen. Now, something about the human body, it tends to adapt to something that it um, can't get rid of. Like a smoker, for example. A person who smokes cigarettes or smoke anything, the smoke will go into your lungs now. That's not what the lungs was designed to do, right? It's nothing but two gases that really supposed to come into the human body. Hey, sis, how you doing? Glad to see you up here. Please share and like. I always see you up here, though, so thank you. But the human body has only two gases that it, well, the lungs, that it really deal with, and that's oxygen and carbon. But when you got this new toxins that's coming into your body in the form of some tobacco smoke or any other smoke, you know, it's irritating. Is irritating the lungs. Now imagine you're breathing in this hot smoke, and you know, some of us we take guns to the nose with other stuff. You know, we're burning up our nasal hairs, we're inflaming our bronchial with all this unnatural smoke that we're uh, smoking. Now, this is smoke now. We know smoking causes lung cancer because we identify that in all smokers. But we don't see that Airwicks, Clones, uh, Lysol, uh, all the other, you know, the candle burning. You know, now we know methothelioma causes it. We know that asbestos can cause it too. But we don't know that these other air pollutants are irritating our lungs to a point of hardening, to a point where they are becoming cancerous. Because you got to think what cancer is here now. Now, if you haven't understood by now what cancer is, you have to go back to all the shows that we've done prior and look at them. Cancer is an adaptation or a mutation. When cells and organs no longer can function properly because the demand is required for them to mutate into something different. Your lungs supposed to only deal with oxygen and carbon. But when another toxic substance keep bearing on the lungs and irritating it, it's going to change and mutate. Your DNA is going to change the cell where it can function to protect itself from that smoke or from that toxic substance. This is an adaptation, but with this adaptation or this mutation, now you don't function properly. It don't exchange oxygen good. And also your immune system will attack any cancerous cell. If the cell is rogue, if it's creating wrong uh, structures from the DNA, it's going to attack it. Look at our previous show. No, necrosis, apoptosis. All that is your body dealing with unhealthy cells. So if you're damaging your lungs every time you... You just damage up all your lung cell tissue. Now the cells have to, you know, heal themselves. But this time, every time you break them down, your cell have to build itself up and it build itself up stronger to be able to resist because it know you're going to smoke again. So every time it's hardening itself. If I go out there and scrape my hand, and I always give y'all this example, if I go out there and scrape my hand on the concrete, my hand is going to repair, but it's going to repair itself a little harder because it thinks that I'm semi-retarded 
and go go out there and do it again. So it, it say, well, I'm gonna make it a little harder in case he go back out there. I'm not gonna make that soft baby skin because he tears that up quick. Right? That bad habit of going out there doing something unnatural like a an imbecile and scraping his hand on the concrete. So the body makes a, a little stronger hand this time. But me, I'm digging harder into it now. I'm not just smoking one cigarette. I'm smoking two cigarettes now. So the, 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 the hand is saying, well, hey, this joker going out there two times a day, scraping his hand on the concrete. And he's still busting into it and, and, and creating sores. So this time when I fix it, I'm going to get it even harder. And this goes on, you know, smoke after smoke, scrape after scrape. You know, I'm constantly irritating the hand to the hand. Now it's just one big callus, one big hardening. So it's just resisting now. It, it's not using as functioning as a hand now. The lungs is not functioning as a lung now. It's just a hardened piece of tissue that just resists the constant irritation of smoke. But that's smoke. Smoke from your candle? Come on now. Smoke is smoke. You know, you, you can you look at the end of a cigarette burning. It's just smoke. Look at a candle wick burning. Look at incense burning. All oh, that's smoke. And we sit there and we, we have sages going around our nose doing all this type of stuff. You're smoking. It's going to irritate the lungs. No. Oh. I know some people may be upset. I told you I'm natural as F. I'm going to tell you the, the, the bare stuff here. You know, smoke is smoke. I don't care where you say it's coming from. It's going to burn and irritate and eventually cause you to end up suffering from some type of lung issue. If not, it's going that issue what you're doing is going to cause other areas to break down because they're not getting proper oxygen. Proper oxygen is, 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 is beneficial to keep all your processes going in your body. You need oxygen. That's what I'm telling you. Oxygen is very important for health. I mean, it's very important. If you haven't seen that yet, let's, let me keep talking for a couple of more minutes. I think we got about another 20 minutes up there. We're going to help you understand before it's all over. But oxygen is very much important. All right. So when we're not getting that proper oxygen, all the cells in the body, not just some cells, but every cell is not going to be able to what? Get energy. So they start breaking down. Why am I sick? Why am I hurting? Well, the doctor ain't going to know. He, 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 all he want, he's going to sit blame it on a germ. Uh, he's going to blame it on some virus. Are he going to tell you that uh, it runs, you know, it, it's, it's something hereditary. It just didn't show up in earlier life. He, he, he's not going to, he's going to give you medicine. He's going to give you herbs. You know, that's the herb, man. He's going to give you herbs and supplements. You know, I mean, I'm just being honest with you. The chiropractor, he's going to crack your back. Now, he might tell you, hey, man, you need to change your diet. You know, uh, get some rest. You know, each each modality is going to tell you that their modality is the one that's going to heal you. Now, most of these don't even tell you they're going to heal you anymore. Like the medical doctor, they they tell you straight up, pretty much all we can do for you is treat the symptom or help you palliate the symptom. There is no cure. You know. They they know they know not to say that they can cure anything. They've learned that because they they, they made so many blunders throughout the uh, time that they don't even stick that to their medicine anymore. They'll tell you we're going to help you, you know, uh, not feel the pain. We're going to help you live with this disease and tell you that. <laughs> That's their slogan now. You know, we helping you. They want you to claim your diabetes. They want you to claim your high blood pressure. They want you to claim your asthma. They want you to claim your lupus. They want you to claim your anemia. They want everything. Claim it. Claim your AIDS. Claim your cancer. And let us help you live with it until you die. 
you know, we, we, we don't want you to live with anything, uh, no health issues, and we don't want you dying prematurely. That's why we're telling you naturally as F that oxygen is important. Breathing it in through your nose and out through your mouth. But we need to get outside. We can't keep breathing in this vault that we're in inside this house that don't have no windows up. They don't have no doors up. That's closed shut tight that you know uh that's energy efficient you got to get out of here that's only if we wish to maintain this high level of health remember i told you that there's many things that you can do without for a little while but those things are going to be required sooner or later also like food like water like exercise that's if you want to get some health you know some strength and build muscle tone but it was not really necessary at the moment or moment by moment but what is important moment by moment is fresh air now a lot of us don't understand why we have a lot of cold and how mucus build up in our body, you know? I know a lot of us think that mucus is um, is the cause of disease. You know, I, I hear a lot of people say that, you know, they follow uh, Dr. Sabi and a couple of other people when they say mucus is the cause of disease. Uh, I, I think it's a little, I think they don't understand what Dr. Sabi was saying when he was saying that. But when mucus is presented, it's just like saying the trash bag is the cause of trash in the house. The trash bag is just the vehicle in which to carry the trash out of the house. Mucus is a body uh, creation to trap the toxins to render them a little easier to come out of the body. You know, they, they about to come, it's like a grease. It's greasing it where it can come out easy. It's like pus when you have them abscesses, and different things like that. It make it come out a little easy. Man, imagine if these crystals and these other toxins were coming out of you dry. It would hurt like I don't know what, just dry stuff coming out of your nose, coming out of your eyes. You know, salt was coming out of your eyes with no type of tears or anything like that. No dilution. It, you will be crying in pain. So the body and all this wisdom, it, it makes this mucus for you. Now, a lot of this is, uh, if we look at our lymph glands, I'm going to share something with you about the lymphatic system. Your lymphatic system where you have glands, like you got uh, adenoids, you got uh, a ring of adenoids up there and you have tonsils up in here. You have other lymph nodes all throughout your body on your arm. They are like miniature police stations, right? That um, protect the body, or the body being a city. And these little, lymph nodes and lymphatic glands, they are like miniature police stations. They have, they train officers to go out there and, you know, find intruders and lock them jokers up. Now, the, these adenoids are that type of gland. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a lymph node. So it's a police station, and when toxins are old dead cells, those are toxins. Uh, food decaying in us, they become they become toxic. Improper air, you know, uh, a bunch of other uh, toxins that uh, uh, we you know we put into our body. 
those toxins have to be dealt with. So the police goes into our body and get those criminals that's robbing us of our health, that's going to tear this body down. And they bound them up. They, 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 they engulf them and they take them back to the mini station, to one of the glands, one of the lymph nodes. It might be in the throat and the tonsils. It might be in the adenoids. These are people who got sinus problems. All right, pay attention here. When those cells get filled up, those glands get filled up from a bunch of toxins, they have to drain. They have to drain out. Now, normal drain is you might just sneeze, cough up some phlegm real quick <coughs> and cough it out. But when the body is overly toxic, now you're going to be coughing continuously <clears throat> and you're going to be sneezing achoo, achoo. and this is going to be going on for a little while you might even get a little woozy you might even get a little fever going on this is what we call a common cold people so a cold is not something that you catch from anybody it's not something that is from a virus it's just your body draining off toxins. It's just that the drainage is imperative for you to maintain homeostasis or to get down to a tolerable load of, of toxins. So your body is, is able to tolerate a certain amount of toxin. That's what we call your threshold. Everybody got a different threshold. You know, Some people can tolerate more toxins than others. But when you reach that threshold, your body has to do either one or two things. It's going to either lay down and die and let the toxin overcome it, or it's going to take action. And that action is going to be to throw off the toxin via any route necessary. Now it's going to use the regular routes to just be a little more severe and more intense. And to the point where it might use another route if those routes are not able to get this stuff out in a timely manner. So when you get that, when soon as we get the finished coughing up a lot of that stuff, soon as we get finished sneezing up a lot of that stuff, and we get back up under the threshold, the coughing stops. The sneezing stops. So the coal is really nothing but an action of the body. All right. So the common cold, we know that many of people, there is no cure for it. Doctors will tell you there's no cure for the common cold. However, millions of people get it every year. And they all recover. Now, if a virus, and I, I posted this the other day now, because some people would be out there like, man, you don't know what you're talking about, man. You know, uh, a cold is caused by a virus. No. What virus? What virus caused the cold? All right. And if you tell me that, how does the cold turn into the flu? If the flu is caused by a whole nother set of viruses, and how does the flu turn into pneumonia? when we're seeing that pneumonia is not even caused by viruses. We have to look at this thing if we look into science a little differently, you know? And we start getting away from the medical science. The medical science is one that's, you know, it's, it's all in theories. It's all about a bunch of theories and those theories are taken for facts. By the average person, you know, I hear people talking every day and repeating what they heard a doctor say. I remember, we talked about that. We called them parakeets, right? They don't even know what they're talking about, you know. I hear them talking about the super spread and stuff. Super spread, what? What's super spread? Ignorance is super spread. It's no super spreading, no, no viruses. And, and we're making it seem like, um, the super spreading 
is is through viruses and and during a time when when we want to get together or when people don't want us to get together or have something we throw out this fear technique yeah you you're gonna get sick we're trying to preserve the community we're not preserving anything life has been going on so if you look closely when you go into a restaurant and see that people come in the restaurant with a mask on soon as they sit down at the table they take the mask off and they commence the eating now the thing is hey um i can't eat with the mask on okay you can't eat with the mask on but you still talking you still got the mask off around a bunch of people how is this you know the the people coming up to you talking to you nobody wearing glove when they bring your food to you uh your your drinks and different things like that i'm just telling you it's just it's not if if, if we were if the virus was so spreadable like that we all be dead because there's no way around it there's no we can't be too careful there's going to be a way that we're going to get infected some type of way we we had to have done touch something if this virus was so crazy no we're getting a little off subject i'm just but it's still showing you that your body is a self-healing organism. Your immune system protects you from all harm. Your uh, when it when if you notice those certain people were getting different symptoms from some type of poison. And this, like I said, there's no more colds, no more flus being reported. But those are the the symptoms that's going on. You know. If we look at it in nature, we see that some years we have uh, love bugs, some years we have the worms, some years we have flies, some years we have mosquitoes, but they don't all be at the same time. They all don't be. Uh, um, they they all don't be here every year. So this is the same thing with these so-called viruses that's coming in our body they uh, uh, migrate and uh, adapt and, and different ones uh feed off of our lifestyle during that time you got let's say millions of viruses or germs or bacteria in your body all of them there for a purpose where you can have life all of them but they have to be in control they can't just be uh, left to grow unhindered you know they got to be controlled and your immune system keeps everybody in control especially with your all your little mini uh, police station they keep everybody at bay but when that immune system get weak man whoever um start growing the fastest is the one whose uh, environment is more favorable. It's something that we're eating, drinking, something in the air, something that is feeding that particular bacteria or that particular organism. All right? So if you have meat rotten, you got certain bacteria or parasites come to meat decaying. If you got bread, decaying or fermenting or breaking down is certain parasites that's going to come out of the bread. Every, you'll say, substance got something to break it down. Now imagine we're putting all this toxic stuff in our body. We eating all these, these Popeye chicken. We don't know what's in that stuff, you know? So let's imagine that, you know, um, that could possibly be Uh, good evening. This is my second time watching, so I may have already missed it, but will you be discussing COVID-19 and the vaccines in the future? We had a lot of shows on them. You can go into our archives and uh, 
and check out some of the shows where we we're talking about but i'm pretty sure we will have another one coming up um this show was more or less talking about the benefits of oxygen now um we we have discussed a lot about the uh covet 19 situation which i'm just wrapping it up now uh the vaccines we had a big thing on that uh last week and the week before that where we were uh talking about um how it's not a vaccine i don't know why we, we keep using the term vaccine it's not a vaccine you know it, it's not a vaccine if you look at science it's that's not what a vaccine is and it doesn't operate like that there's some new technology this is some research for a chemotherapy drug a, a, a genetic altering drug uh and the world is is a big science play right now but um, we, we, we will discuss on that a little more in the future. But um, we do want you to take control of your own health. Let's not allow other people to scare us into taking their medicine, scaring us to taking their, you know, uh, following their, I'm just gonna have to really say this and I hope no one get offended, uh, idiotic practices. I, the superstitious stuff, masks, you know, keep putting chemicals on my hand, chemicals, you know. So it's a lot of stuff that we're just putting in our body. We're eating bad foods. We're eating, uh, you know, all this new stuff that's coming out this year. And we all go run and do it. You, you, if you've seen how many people was lined up at Popeye's, it was crazy. Every new thing came out. We eat a whole bunch of chicken. So yeah, we're going to have a lot of breathing problems and and allergic reactions, you know, asthmas and stuff like that. We're eating poultry. We're eating poultry like 90 go, going south. So, yes, we're going to have a lot of breathing problems. We're drinking a bunch of this toxic water, you know, um, with all this chlorine in there. So we're going to have breathing problems. But I want you all to remember and get as much clean air as you possibly can. Oxygen is what's going to keep you healthy. Best of health and happiness from Savannah Natural Health. Get ready for the Alicia Blakely show coming up live next. And I want to see y'all here next week where we can talk health some more. Natural is F, Ferrante Frazier. Best of health and happiness. Have a great day.